This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Well, hey. So I was sitting on my back porch the other day, eating a bowl of Rice Krispies and bourbon, when I looked out at this old fire pit here. It's been here since we moved in. It's not terrible, but I had this idea. And I wondered if I could do a poured concrete fire pit. Now, let me preface this by saying, I know absolutely nothing about pouring concrete outdoors. I've never done it before in my life. So this is kind of gonna be a learning experience. This whole video could be a terrible disaster. There's really no way of knowing except to get our hands dirty and get to work. So let's try and make a poured concrete fire. Here's an idea. Let's watch Jason build something he's never built before in his entire life. Or rather, do something he's never done before in his entire life, and that is pour concrete outside. I had this crazy idea that I wanted to do a poured concrete fire pit. So naturally, I got a bunch of wood. I figured first things first, I needed to make some forms to pour my concrete into. I mean, if I didn't, it would just go all over the yard and <laughs> that would just be silly. So I ran out to the big box store and I got the cheapest plywood I could find. Now normally that would be OSB or something like that, but with lumber prices the way they are, the cheapest plywood I could find was this pine-faced sanded ply garbage they sell at Home Depot. So after bringing the plywood into my shop, I quickly made this little jig to trace out the shape of my form. Now I have my internal diameter, which will be the size of my fire pit, and then I have my external diameter, which will just give me a little room to add some wood and stabilization to make my form not fall down. Next I marked my circle at the halfway point. This would allow me to cut out exactly one half of the circle. I'm gonna have to make four of these. Two for the bottom and two for the top. Two complete rings, if you will. Then I tried to trace out the inside of my form on that same sheet of ply inside my half circle, but I quickly realized that it wasn't gonna fit with me trying to get as much as I could out of a single sheet of ply. So I'll just have to cut those out somewhere else down the road, but we'll worry about that later. After drawing two half circles on one sheet of ply, I moved over to the other sheet and I drew two more half circles, all the same size, marking them exactly at the halfway point so I would know where they needed to be cut. Next, I had to figure out how to cut these things out. That's when I did something that was probably really stupid. I decided that instead of using a router with a circle cutting jig, I would just get the jigsaw and do it all by hand. It's not that this didn't work, it did. It didn't need to be perfect for this purpose, but as soon as I started cutting this with the jigsaw, I just regretted it, thinking, man, a router would have been much faster. But did I stop? Did I change to the router like a smart person? No. Like the moron I am, I just persevered and cut the entire thing out with the jigsaw. Slowly and surely it got the job done, but man, was it a total pain in the butt. But a little good news, after cutting out all of my half circles, I found that I had enough scrap ply left over to trace out the circle for the interior of my form. Now the outer circle is a 50 inch diameter and the internal circle is a 30 inch diameter, which would give me 10 inches of concrete fire pit all the way around, like a big concrete ring. I mean, I like my backyard and someone once told me if you like it, then you should put a ring on it. I think they were talking specifically about concrete fire pits when they said that. 
So after tracing out and cutting one circle for my interior form, I did the same thing for the second circle. And then I moved over to my second sheet of plywood and cut out the remainder of my rings. I'm not going to show you this entire process because, well, did I mention it? It was kind of crappy. But pretty soon I had two circles for my interior form and four half circles for my exterior form. See? I'm just showing you all the little parts here. But the one thing I hadn't done yet was cut right on that halfway mark. So I needed to take all of my half circles over and chop them down to size. This was a bit awkward doing it on the chop saw, but hey, if it's not awkward, then it's not woodworking, right? No, actually, that's, that's wrong. Woodworking should not be awkward. Unless you're in my shop. Anyways, pretty soon I had all the pieces cut out that I needed to start constructing my form. The only problem was, at this point, they were pretty two-dimensional. And I needed to make them three-dimensional. So I went to the big box store and I bought about two million dollars worth of two by fours. You think I'm joking, but with lumber prices the way they are nowadays, it was about that much. And of course, when you get two million dollars worth of lumber, you cut it into small, tiny pieces, which is exactly what I did. I took all of my pieces of two by four over to my pre-cut plywood half circle thingamabobs, and I just kind of plopped them in place. I didn't use a tape measure, I just spaced them out to what looked even. I mean, they don't have to be perfect. This is just a big thing you're going to fill with concrete, so don't waste too much time getting it exact. Then I marked the center of each one of those 2x4 braces onto my top piece of plywood. Then I set it on the bottom one and I transferred that mark to the bottom. This would just allow me to get all of those braces lined up from top to bottom without having to use a silly tape measure. I mean, <laughs> who even uses those anymore? Then I clamped the whole thing together and I just screwed my braces directly to my piece of plywood, holding it nice and snug. And you're probably never gonna believe this, but after screwing it on one side, I flipped the whole thing over and yep, that's right, call me crazy, but I did the exact same thing on the other side until I had a very secure, perfect half circle form thing. And what's it? I really gotta learn what concrete people call this stuff. I think it's just called a form, right? The cool thing is I kind of accidentally discovered a design for a brand new piece of lawn furniture. Yeah, this totally works. I'm gonna definitely do this one day. It's actually pretty darn comfortable. I could, I could sit in here all day. But I won't, because we got concrete to pour. After doing one half circle, yep, I did another half circle, because we didn't want a half circle, we wanted a full circle. Then with my outer form circle put together, it was time to start working on my interior form. Now, I was originally just gonna make this one solid circle, but then I thought that's gonna be a total pain to get out. I mean, I'm not gonna be able to get my hands in there or work in there at all. So I decided to cut my internal form into a ring to match my external form. So I just quickly cut out a circle and then I had two rings for my internal form so I cut about three thousand dollars more in two by fours and I just started throwing them in there to create a similar but smaller version of my exterior form once again marking my plywood so that I could get everything lined back up and then screwing my two by fours to my plywood ring I gotta tell you, this is the weirdest woodworking I have ever done before in my life. I mean, I'm spending all this time just to pour concrete over the entire thing. It seems so wrong. Anyways, I digress. 
In no time I had a runaway internal form, but I eventually caught it and plopped it in place and we were well on our way to pouring that delicious concrete. Now, after looking at these forms for a while, I decided that there was too many holes in there. I had to line the inside with something or I was pretty sure the concrete would just leak out. So I had an idea. I found this 3 8 inch soffit material at the big box store and it's got this pre-printed wood grain pattern. Now I originally was going to use melamine so that it was perfectly smooth, but I thought hey, a printed wood grain fire pit actually sounds pretty cool. So I went over to the table saw and I ripped down a bunch of strips of the 3 8 inch material. But just my luck, 3 8 of an inch was just a little too thick for it to bend and fit the shape of the form. I tried, oh believe me, I tried, but it just wasn't happening. So when in doubt, kerf it out, as I always say. So I went over to the chop saw and I set my miter saw to the trenching feature. This allowed me to just cut part way through the back of all of my boards and I kerfed like a crazy man. And when I just couldn't kerf no more, I took my board over and tested to see if now it would bend to fit the shape. And what do you know, it bent much better with all those kerfs cut in the back of it. Yeah, I think it might work. Here's where I call it another audible. I was going to hook the two rings together and then add this material to the inside, staggering all my seams so they'd kind of blend together. But I thought, man, that is going to make it hard to pull apart. So the easiest thing I could come up with was to do the internal form skinning, is that what you call it, in four separate sections. Yes, I would have seams, but by doing them in four even sections, I'd have four even seams, and I thought this would look the best and be the easiest to take apart. So after clamping a few pieces in place, I just screwed them on from the inside. Now you're probably thinking, well, wait, that's the side with the concrete. Those screws are gonna show up. Yeah, I know, I thought about that too, but then I realized I'm doing this wood grain pattern so wouldn't it also look cool if there were screws imprinted into the concrete i don't know i thought it would be neat so i just screwed them on in nice uniform screw-like patterns it was by far the easiest way to attach them i could have come up with some slick method to attach them from the outside so there were no visible screws but I really think it's gonna look good. Just just trust me. Go with me on this, all right? Don't don't call me crazy until you, you see the end result. Who knows? I could be lying to myself. It could look terrible, but it's too late. I already started. We're just going with it. After doing one section, I did the exact same thing to the other section. And pretty soon I had my entire form covered with fake 3/8 inch soffity wood. Man, I hope I'm doing this right. Don't question yourself, Jason. You got this, buddy. I know, it's just when people are watching a video, they expect you to know what you're doing. Yeah, but but it's okay. You're faking it really well, and I'm, I'm sure they'll just go along with it. Sorry, sometimes I have internal dialogues with myself. After getting my entire exterior form complete, it was time to start working on the interior form. Now I knew if I had a hard time making that 3 8 inch soffit material bend on the outside, there was no way in heck I was going to get it to bend on the inside. So I decided to switch to quarter inch melamine for the inside. I also decided that it was probably going to be really hard to get this interior form out in one giant piece. So I decided to cut it into three separate pieces in the hopes that I could get all the pieces out intact and not have to tear the form apart. I mean, if this works, potentially I could use this form multiple times. So after adding a few more brace pieces, I just cut the form apart using a sawzall right in between my added brace pieces so that it came apart in three nice little sections. 
And then of course, when I had them apart, I screwed them back together. But the difference was I screwed them back together in a way that would be easy to take them apart. All my screws were reachable from the inside. So the plan was put it in in one piece and then after the concrete sets up, take my screws out and just easily pop all three of those sections out. I mean, it's gonna work that way, right? Come on, tell me it's gonna work that way. Now, because I cut it into three separate sections, this meant that I had to add my quarter inch melamine in three separate sections. Because if I overlapped my seam with the melamine, well, that defeats the entire purpose of cutting it into three pieces. So once again, I just hooked on the skin for my internal form with screws, leaving them purposely a little proud, hoping that this would give them the opposite effect once I poured the concrete and make them look countersunk in the actual pour. I don't know if this is gonna work. I'm literally making all of this up as I go. Who knows, I've never done this before. And with that, my form was complete. I was pretty much ready to pour some concrete. There was just one more thing I had to do, and I knew I wouldn't be able to do it alone. I needed some backup. This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Animation, creative writing, film and video, fine arts, graphic design, illustration, music, photography, UI, UX, design, whatever that is, web development, just to name a few of the classes available on Skillshare. One class that I recently took and thoroughly enjoyed was Productivity for Creatives by Thomas Frank. I think the biggest misunderstanding about productivity is that it's about getting more work done, putting in more hours, and that's not what it's about. Or video for Instagram, taught by Halise Narvaez. Hi, I'm Halise, a digital storyteller and YouTuber, and ever since I bought my first camcorder at 12, I've been making videos. Whether you want to say a lot or a little, filmmaking is a really strong form of communication. Whether you want to- It's curated specifically for learning meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Now let's go pour some concrete. Now, obviously, before we poured the new fire pit, we had to get rid of the old fire pit. So, as reluctant as I was, I had to call in my foreman for help. He's a nice enough guy, but he's just always on my case. If I slow down for one second, he just yells at me, says, get to work! But he was nice enough. He let me use his shovel, which worked okay. And I tried taking a nap and letting him do a little of the work for once, but he wasn't having any of that. He kept yelling at me, get up or you're fired, get to work, I'm not going to stand for this. And then he jumped on me. Ugh, I'm in an abusive work environment. After we scraped up the old fire pit, we brought out the forms for the new fire pit. Once again, the foreman made me do all the heavy lifting, but we got the pieces in place. Then I scraped away some of the earth until it was nice and perfectly level from my outer form to my inner form. Then with everything pretty much in its proper place, I threw in a few pieces of PVC pipe. Now these serve two functions. They're all cut to the exact same length, so they will make sure that that inner ring is perfectly positioned in the center of the outer ring. But they'll also create holes through my concrete pour, which will allow air to get in for the fire and water to get out when it rains. 
I'm making a fire pit, not a giant bird bath after all. So with my pieces of PVC in place, I screwed the two rings together to make one giant encased circle. Then I took some paste wax because I'm a woodworker and I don't know what you're supposed to put on concrete to make the concrete not stick to the form. So I got what you put on wood to make wood not stick to wood, and that is paste wax. And I wiped it on everything. Then after doing some research on concrete fire pits, I realized I needed to put something on the inside so that the concrete wouldn't get too hot and explode. Yes, this is a thing that can happen. So I bought these fire bricks on Amazon. They're rated for 2,370 degrees and I use them to line the inside of my form right where the fire was gonna be. From what I read online, this will protect the concrete from expanding due to the heat and, like I said, exploding. <laughs> Which would be really cool and fun to watch, but I don't wanna ruin my fire pit. Then to hold my fire brick in place until I poured, I just wrap some tape around it. I mean, why not? Now, I don't own a concrete mixer, nor did I want to rent one, which meant that I was going to be mixing all of this concrete by hand. And after doing the math, I was going to need 25 bags of concrete. That's a lot of concrete to mix by hand. And I'm lazy. I didn't want to do that. So I decided I didn't need to pour that much concrete because this whole thing really doesn't need to be that thick. If I could create some kind of mass inside the ring that would take up room, I would have to pour less concrete, which sounded like a good idea. So within my form, I hammered two rings of rebar and attached this wire mesh to the inner ring and the outer ring. Then in the void that created, I filled the entire thing with just a crazy amount of rock. I figured this would take up space so I didn't have to pour as much concrete, and the rebar and mesh would hopefully add a little strength to the concrete ring itself. And boom, just like that, I was ready to pour some concrete. I've got my outer ring, I've got my internal mesh stone structure, I've got my fire brick to protect against heat, and I've got my internal form. What else could you need to pour concrete? Oh yeah, that's right. I almost forgot, I have to actually mix the concrete. Believe it or not, this is the first time I have ever mixed just standard concrete with water and a hoe, like you see people do on TV. So I didn't really know what I was doing. I just started adding water until it looked like a good concrete -y consistency. And when I reached that point, I wheeled it over to the fire pit and I just started shoveling it in. My plan was to fill up that internal void between the fire brick and the stone first. Once I did that, I vibrated the crud out of it with a reciprocating saw without a blade on it. I'd add a little concrete, I'd vibrate, I'd add some more concrete, I'd vibrate, you get the point. I quickly realized that my max was three bags at a time that I could adequately mix without overflowing my little pole cart. So I'd mix three bags, go over and fill up as much as I could, and vibrate some more. The vibrating served two functions. It got all the air bubbles out of the concrete, and it worked all the concrete down into every little crack and crevice into the mesh and between all the stone. Once I filled up that internal void, I started working on the external void. Pouring concrete and vibrating. Pouring concrete and vibrating. I have to tell you, I was ridiculously sore after mixing all this concrete and vibrating for an entire morning. It wasn't fun. Next time, I'm renting a flippin' concrete mixer. I ain't got time for this. All in all, I think it took me right around, oh, maybe an hour and 20 minutes to mix all the concrete and get it in there. 
After doing the math for my ring and the amount of space that I removed with the stones, I figured I'd need 18 bags of concrete. Now this is an absolute miracle, and it has never happened to me before in buying lumber, so maybe I should switch to concrete. But I used exactly, and I mean exactly, 18 bags to fill up this thing. Gosh, I love it when that happens. So after getting it completely full to the very top, I vibrated it one last time. Really well. And then I screeded the top. Notice I'm saying screed. In my concrete countertop video, I said screet with a T. And boy, did you guys not like that. I got a lot of comments telling me that it was screed, not screet. So I've learned from my mistakes. All right, I do read the comments, and I know now that it's screed. Wait, is it screed or screet? Can't remember. Pretty sure it's screed. Don't hate me. Once it was screeded, I floated the top with a plasma float, because I guess that's a thing. Then I didn't show you guys this, but after letting it sit up for a while, I made this little stamp out of a scrap piece of that soffit material. And I thought if the sides are gonna have a wood grain on it, then the top should probably have wood grain on it too. Now, I didn't know if this was gonna work or not. I never stamped concrete a day in my life. And who knows if a scrap piece of wood would even work for a stamp. But, what do you know? It worked perfect. My stamp was big enough to do one quarter at a time. So I just slowly worked my way around all four sides until it was completely stamped. Then after letting it dry just a little bit longer, I covered the whole thing in plastic just to slow down the curing process. Then the next day, a good, oh, 20 to 30 hours later, more like 30 hours later, I came out to remove the forms. The outer forms were super easy, other than my drill battery not wanting to work. All I had to do was pop out the screws on the outer form and hopefully just pull it apart. Really didn't know if that paste wax was going to do its job or not. So I kind of pried apart and I pulled and ugh, boom goes the dynamite. I gotta say, I'm no expert in concrete, so I don't know exactly what it's supposed to look like, but it looked pretty darn good to me. The wood grain on the inside of the forms showed through in the concrete better than I could have hoped for. I mean, it looked awesome. The only issue I had was with the interior form. That was not as easy to remove as I hoped it would be. I took out the screws like I had planned to separate the form into three separate pieces. That all went well, I mean the screws came right out, as they should, but then I pulled, hoping that the form would slide up nice and easy, and it didn't. This is when I decided there was only one thing to do, and that was to, well, rip the internal form apart. Now luckily, because I screwed the top plywood parts of the form in place, I was able to access those screws and unscrew the top part of the form. So once I got all those screws out, I used a pry bar to pry the plywood third of a ring things away. Then I just started ripping out 2x4s the best I could. Prying a little here, ripping a little there, until I got most of the internal form structure removed. Once I had all the plywood off the top and as many of the braces as I could get out, remember some of those braces are screwed directly to the melamine, I just started pulling and fortunately the forms eventually came out. And after I got one section out, well, the other sections came out super easy. See? Just hit it with a hammer a little bit and plop. Hit it with a hammer a little bit and plop. Now I know what you're thinking. Man, that fire brick with the concrete smeared all over it looks horrible. 
Well, don't worry, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. I just took a hammer and whacked all the concrete that had dripped down in between the bricks and the form. This was just really thin pieces of concrete, so it came right off with a little help from the hammer and chisel. Once I got all of the concrete removed down low, I used a chisel just to kind of follow a line at the top of the brick and make a little bit of a smoother transition from concrete onto the fire brick. With that done, I wanted to see if I could get these pieces of PVC out. I fully expected this to be a pain and maybe not even be able to pull them out, but they slid right out. Must have been all that paste wax I lubed them up with. I mean, I was a little disappointed because I thought it would be fun to watch them melt into nothingness, but that would probably be bad for the environment. So with my PVC removed and my bricks cleaned up on the inside, there was just a few more things left to do to make it look all pretty. I happened to have a few bags of the stone left over that I used for the inside of the fire pit, so I figured, what the hey? I might as well spread it around the outside and pretend like I'm a landscaper. But it really did clean it up much nicer than just the ring of bare dirt. Then the easiest thing I did to make this thing just pop was I purchased this pre-made fire pit ring insert. These are literally available at Lowe's or Home Depot. They just sell them with all the stone and it slid perfectly in the top of the fire pit and it covered up that ugly transition from fire brick to concrete and just really made the whole thing pop. And I was done. <laughs> hey, what do you know? I did it, it worked. This thing turned out better than I could have even hoped for. I got my layer of fire brick around the inside and I got this stock metal fire pit insert at Lowe's I think. This thing's supposed to stand up to heat well. The fire brick's supposed to stand up to heat up to 4,000 degrees or something crazy like that. No, that's not right. 2,300? Anyways, it's a lot. So hopefully, this cement will stand up great over time to a fire. Now, the downside to this video is I can't show you the pit with the fire in there. I wanna let this concrete completely cure up, and that's gonna take about a month. So I'm not gonna put a fire in here for at least 30 days, and then I will give it its maiden voyage. But I didn't wanna make you wait that long for the video. So this is as far as you will be able to see. If you wanna see updates on this fire pit and how it lasts the test of time, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I will definitely post some updates there. If you're not doing so, maybe join my Patreon. There's a link in the video description along with all the products and supplies I used in this video. As always, thanks for watching.